everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Tula Pink Block of the Month. This is Month 5, Section 5. So we are going to be learning a new technique today. Some of the um, blocks that you are going to make are going to be repeats from previous month, so no stress. But you're going to learn how to do a flying geese block for this month. So we'll get right to those demonstrations. So we are going to be making flying geese blocks for this month. And you're going to have two fabric colors, kind of a gray and then that's super, super bright uh, that's called pear. And so I've already marked on all of the back side of my squares a line that goes from corner to corner on the diagonal. This is um, my iron away, my Frixon iron away gel pen. And I always have people ask me, how do you click it? It's clicked by this little, um, this little pen holder here. Anyway, I'm going ahead and I'm going to stitch on these lines. I'll go ahead and make two at a time. And the key here is to lay these out so that that point at the corner is going to make a V. So we just work with one piece at a time. Same with our other selections. These are going to have these solids on either side. And I'm going to show you how I stitch these to make a really nice sharp point and quarter of an inch seam. So now that I've got my fabric marked, I'm ready to sew. And when I sew this, I'm going to just sew a thread's width on this outside of the line here. Um, and that gives me a little bit of room for my thread to take up space. And then when this folds over to take up space as well. So let's just lower our presser foot. And as I stitch, I'm just gonna take a needle's width, just a thread's width on the outside of that line. If you get right on the line, you don't need to stress. Let's see how I did here. So you can see my marked line and it's just a little bit on this side of the line. Instead, you definitely don't want to be this way. Um, especially because when you press that over, think about how much there's thread underneath there and fabric, so you get a much nicer fold this way. So I've already taken my stitch, and this is when you're going to trim this outside edge a quarter of an inch away, about, from that seam allowance here, and then this is going to get pressed. So I'll take that to my little ironing press pad so you can see how that's going to get pressed. So now I've pressed this piece and I decided to go ahead and press it open like my other pieces. And I'm going to take a square of the same color and position that on the opposite corner here. And I will take my stitching again along the outside edge of this line here. Again, it's just a thread width to the outside of that line. So now I'm ready to do my trimming. My quarter of an inch. That one got a little small. And then this can also be pressed open as well or to one side, but I'm gonna to try to reduce the bulk as much as I can and press this seam open as well. So I've got all of my flying geese done and you can see that these are gonna be sewn into a row that's gonna give you this really cool um, chevron effect because of the colors used. And also when you go to sew these together, you've got your quarter of an inch seam allowance between the edge and your point. So when you stitch these right sides together, you should Kind of watch that point as you go so that you're not cutting off that edge. So we've made our new section, section five, with our um, flying geese and those are all done, uh, ready to be sewn in. And 
Also, all of our other elements are done and feeling pretty good about being halfway done and finishing this section five. I hope you're still enjoying this process and all of the new fabrics and little bits that you get to make every month. So thank you for joining us for section five. It's gonna be the same thing as previous sections. You're going to make one section and then place your fabrics down um, right sides together to create that mirror image block. So thank you so much for watching our Tulip Pink Block of the Month video for section five.